Welcome everyone to the Coalition for Marriage YouTube channel and just in case you're joining us for the first time especially warm welcome to you do click that subscribe button so you get notified of any new videos as they come along. Now let me just emphasize that of course Coalition for Marriage are an organization for people of all faiths and none. We have tens of thousands of supporters up and down the country and what joins us together is that fundamental belief that real marriage is between one man and one woman for one lifetime. Now at the Vatican released a statement confirming that marriage can only ever be between one man and one woman and I thought it might be nice to chat that through with somebody who's done an awful lot of representation at a very high level for the Catholic Church. So it's a privilege to welcome today John Deegan. John has served for 16 years or more as a political campaigner in the Scottish Parliament. John, it's a real privilege to have you with us. Would you like to say hi to our listeners? Hello to everyone. Hello to you, Tony. I'm delighted to, to be here. I hope I can say something which is of interest. I'm, I'm looking forward to our discussion on this very important issue. You're changing jobs in September, is that right? Just now, I'm the Deputy Chief Executive yeah. Officer for SPUC UK. John Smeaton will be moving on in September and I'll be taking over. Can you tell us a little bit about what you did when you were a Parliamentary Officer in Scotland? Yeah, well, in that role, I represented the views of the Catholic community. My role was really to make sure that the values that they believe they're offering to society for the good of society are understood by our politicians. That would mean liaising with the various departments of government or with MSPs or with ministers, ensuring that we contributed to consultation papers, consultation meetings from time to time. The other side of that was reflecting back to the, the Catholic community community to make sure they were informed. And to be honest, we, we did a lot of work with people beyond the Catholic community. It's asking people to reflect on particular principles that we believe are the foundations of natural law. That principally is built on trying to promote the human family and the common good. How did that go, John? Because it seems like a pretty tough job to have in Scotland or anywhere at this point in time. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was pretty much, Tony, the standing in front of a tidal wave. And the epitome of that, I suppose, was to sweep away the values of marriage and the understanding of, of the family. You know, so the things that happened actually centuries and decades before led to that. Everyone can observe the features of a, a, a decent society, the features that allow people to prosper. So we know that we're more likely to prosper when we uphold certain values the freedom, the dignity of individual persons, the importance of the environment in which people are raised, i.e. the family, what it is that makes a family strong, marriage, recognition of marriage, the culture that supports marriage that surrounds the, the family, a healthy civil society that believes in freedom of speech, that holds government to account. You know, in every civilization, you get to a stage where people start to forget why that civilization was successful. There's a sort of adolescence, really, that sets in in culture. They start to rebel against their values just because it seems a trendy thing to do. Mm. And unfortunately, that spirit captured many of our social institutions but when you look over 20 30 40 years you start to think oh my mm. goodness why are so many children messed mm. up now why are so many children in despair why are so many people on antidepressants you know why such a mm. high suicide mm. rate why do you have such anxiety in society you know it will probably take another generation of politicians to come across and think guys things have gone really wrong or we've got some really deep-rooted problems how do we fix those and that's where we might start mm. to see hopefully a, a, a swing back i was really interested to note we're recording this in March 2021. The Vatican released an announcement saying that it was impossible to redefine marriage. Was that a surprise to you, first of all, that the Catholic Church should come out and say that? If you're relying on the, the church to faithfully pass on its doctrine, then it couldn't do anything else. But certainly a lot of Catholics recently have been noticing that there's been an emphasis now on forgiveness and, and loving everyone and everyone's wonderful mm. and there's a good reason of charity behind that. But at the same time, it's then meant the lack of emphasis on structures of truth and actually clearly saying to people, you know, things that are right and things are wrong, the lack of that has led to a confusion. I think that was about time it was clarified to make people certain once more that the Catholic Church can't change its teaching. It's in our very nature about what a, a man is, what a woman is, about the fact that the relationship between them, that there is a unique relationship between a man and a woman that's fruitful, that has children, and that children are in a, a situation that's best protected when that 
mother and father make a commitment to each other. It's the cradle of development for all the virtues. You take on your values, you learn to appreciate others, you learn to tolerate others, encounter human weakness and practice forgiveness and experience forgiveness. The quality of that can change, but the intrinsic nature of it is something that's built into to human nature and that, that won't change. Even if all of society lost all its books and all its learning from everything before, we would discover it all over again. So it was a clarification that was welcome, needed, and hopefully that will encourage the churchmen and members of the Catholic and other Christian communities. In your experience of dealing with politicians over 16 years, what sort of things work? How do you have an effect on them? It's very difficult. They need to be very brave to put their head above the parapet. And even ones who are brave, to be honest, they sometimes just don't have the time to reflect. They will jump onto a bandwagon, often very clever people, but they're, they're clever in that way that you can give them something to recite and they'll memorise it for you and they know the right answer that they're supposed to give. The politician who's got the time to think that it's worth learning from those who've gone before, from the values of all the major religions and major philosophies the world's ever seen. I did notice in the Scottish Parliament there was a feel like we're the new generation, we've got it all and you know the old systems of the past, they didn't quite get it but we've got it. Very quickly we started to see all these you know sound bites placing reason, vested interests, taking hold of the authority within parties. You mm. saw particular trends and cliques making their way in to be the advisors and the sort of office staff of politicians. Flows of streams of culture within the civil service. So again, the civil service strongly determines what politicians do. You had inexperienced ministers or, or youngish ministers going into a department and you've got very seasoned staff there who've got very strong opinions and often with very strong links to lobby groups informing the sorts of things they come up with. I suppose I'm giving the impression that it's a big challenge. There's not an easy answer there. But I think we've got to realise that it doesn't take a lot of people to be mobilised and to be solid with what you believe in. I think have confidence in reason, have mm. confidence in science, say it, pass it on, mm. get it into mm. newspapers. What you're hinting at is there are some foundational changes we need to make. So there's that short-termism you mentioned, which politicians are just so sadly vulnerable to and we get so few conviction politicians these days and then there's the whole concept of young people growing up taking responsibility themselves you mentioned earlier on in our conversation about people not thinking through some of the things they say i wonder if you've got any more thoughts on how we can help people to think through the statements or the assumptions they're making. I think there's been a fear that we're offending people. Believing in the truth is not intolerant. It's recognising that reason is a thing, that social science shows you something. I think it's a time for people to be a bit braver about proposing the truth and not be put off by these sort of online mobs. You know, it's something that surprises mm. me when you look into it, you think some companies changed its policy because like 20 people on Twitter gave them, you know, a nasty message. I'm always amazed how terrified every one is of the mob. You know, I, I always think if you're telling the truth and someone says you're nasty for telling the truth, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's not mm. going to change me. You know, if you, if, you reason, if you reason with me, I would be totally willing to see your perspective mm. and try mm. everything I could to accommodate a difference of opinion. I think I think that anyone in a reasonable society would do that. But if you have a, a truth that's so important to so many people, especially to the most vulnerable, to children, you have a duty to actually speak up for it. If young people can see that there's a source of that, I think they will coalesce around that. So I think giving leadership, getting information out there, stop being afraid. If it's true, it will speak mm. for itself. In my present job, we do a lot of work with young people and you'll be surprised that they can actually see through it. And the number of times I've heard from young people that it only needs one voice and suddenly lots of others in the class are going to them and mm. saying, well, actually, mm. I believe that as well, but I was just frightened to say it. Of course, things go wrong and we try to be as charitable and supportive mm. as we can when they do go wrong, but let's not wipe away the whole edifice of marriage and family mm -hmm. simply to make one person feel better by being told something's not true. In terms of the way forward then, if you were to advise people who uh, want to stick up for real marriage, want to promote real marriage, what would your advice be? Be aware that it's always a, a creative minority that leads culture and also be aware that politicians follow culture, they don't create it. So I would be looking at creating groups within civic society. Find the politicians who are open to reason and show them that you can mobilise people to support them. Show them that you can give them the evidence that they can put forward and debate. I say to my children often, you didn't live before all of this new value system was imposed on you from above. And all of your friends at school and at university 
they believe those things because they've been told to believe it. They didn't dis- discover it, but it was only 20 years ago that pretty much the whole world knew that a lot of the foundational values promoted by secularism, especially around about the family, were false. It can be turned around again. And you mentioned that the idea of getting involved in civic society. The people who make the decisions are the people who turn up. That requires getting involved in all aspects of civil society, whether it be school governor, joining a local political party and turning up, picking the local candidates. All those things can make an absolute transformational difference. Couldn't have said it better, Tony. Yes, very much agree. Those who hijacked the whole marriage debate knew what they were doing. They targeted, you know, a mm. core six culture shaping institutions. You know, they, they did target the churches was one of them. Trade unions, we've seen what they did in universities, but they also targeted the entertainment mm. industry. One mm. of the big areas we need to work on just now, a crucial one, is the universities. The whole swathe of academics trying to impose their personal views on young children. They're often disinclined to allow reasoned debate. Reason and rational debate are on our side. I'm afraid the people who promoted that, they did it at a time as they saw it as an opportunity to dismantle the values that they didn't like and now they've pretty much pulled the ladders up behind them and they suffer no level of dissent. They're completely intolerant to those who disagree with them. That intolerance in the name of tolerance yeah. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Yes, it is quite remarkable. I've always advised people to look at what you're being accused at by those you're against and you will often find they're accusing you of what they're actually putting into practice. Easy ways to support people are donate to the right organisation that's doing the right thing. That's the thing you can do. Write to your local newspapers. Ask your minister to include petition or to make literature available. You know, make sure your MP knows your name. You know, it receives an email from you a couple of times a year. Talk to your friends. Ask your friends what they believe and just think, you know, should we do anything about that together? You know, ask your children to talk about it. You know, children are always being asked to write essays at school for topical debates. Ask them to raise one of those in a prudent way. Teach your children the prudent, easy answers to some of the common objections. I'm always amazed that people just do not know the answer. So chat mm. to your kids about that so that they know that mm. there are answers and show them that the answers that we have are, are solid. They're based in reason and that, that they hold up to scrutiny and the evidence mm. actually shows that they're true. That's a wonderful point to end on. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a genuine privilege to meet you and to talk to you. John Deegan, wish you all the very best. Tony, thank you. And thanks for all the work that you do supporting marriage. It was a, a pleasure to meet you and uh, I hope we can keep in touch. Thank you once again for watching. If you would like to contribute to the work of Coalition for Marriage, pop across to our website, click that donate button. But until next time, thanks for viewing.